What's up guys? Welcome back to the More Movement Arts channel. Uh, today we're going to be talking again about rotation and double pull and double push exercises. Okay. Uh, also we're going to be talking about crawling as a means to enhance your ability to rotate and the, that the fact that those two patterns match together, rotation, bipedal, and cross crawl, they both match together in terms of the muscles you're activating. Okay. So first, we're going to talk about why it's important to practice rotation. I have talked about this all the time. It's the most functional way that your core moves as you perform the most functional exercises or movements, throwing, punching, takedowns, every, basically everything in mixed martial arts, jiu-jitsu, uh, wrestling, grappling. Uh, also f for throwing motions, throwing football, throwing, uh, swinging a club, swinging a baseball bat, uh, swinging a hockey stick, whatever it is, swinging, and um, also kicking, all those different activities utilize a lot of rotation, okay? And that's the most functional way. It's the way we're designed to move, okay? So in saying that, now when we think about doing certain types of exercises that may be a double push, which means you're using both legs or both arms to either push or pull or lift or to... Uh, you know, lift yourself or lift weight up off the ground, okay? Again, one that's linear resistance going up and down, but also there's lack of rotation in the body, okay? So for example, if I'm here and I'm doing, uh, we'll do Superman versus Scuba Steve, okay? So on my Superman exercise, I'm lifting with both arms and I'm dropping with both arms, okay? So that means that the posterior muscles, the muscles on my back, okay, the back uh, flexors, or extensors, I'm sorry, uh, they, they, they are going to contract, okay, so when I lift up this way, both of the muscles in my back contract to lift my shoulder, to lift my arm, right, these are my posterior muscles, my back muscles, okay, so when I do opposite way, and I lift with this one and then the other one here, this way, both with my feet and my arms, okay? This is more functional. This is um, the, your preferred motor patterning is to flex the opposite sides where I'm flexing my right hand and my left foot or my left foot, my left hand and my right foot at the same time rather than both at the same time or all four at the same time. Because right now, my entire front side, my anterior side, is going to be relaxing or strength or lengthening, I should say, as I'm flexing my posterior or my backside, all of them, okay? Or if it's just my upper body, right? It's all of my back muscles, okay? Not all of them, but the, the ones that are uh, on my back activate m m um, more when I do that, rather than just being one side, where now if we're talking about crawling, okay, and I have these muscles supporting and these muscles lifting, now it's going to be the supporting muscles are going to be contracted on the posterior side. So these guys here on the, po on the front side, sorry, anterior front side, okay, and then the muscles that are being lifted, those are going to be my posterior side. So it's going to be my shoulder on my right side and my glutes in my back on my left side okay and then you alternate between those two okay so again here front front muscles are contracting on my left and my right upper lower and then i switch and now it's the opposite side right side front left side lower okay so switching between those two patterns it's the same thing that happens when you flex or when you move, okay, when you uh, rotate, when you throw, you're going to have these guys and these guys contracting at the same time. Let's say as we're here, this way, I'm throwing this way, I'm bringing this shoulder to this hip in the same way that I flex the, the, the front side, the, the anterior muscles and the anterior muscles as I'm here, anterior, anterior. Same thing as I rotate, I'm bringing these forward. These guys lengthen, these guys lengthen, these guys contract, and these guys contract here, right? 
And so um, apply that to throwing punches, apply that to running, as opposed to, for example, um, double pulling, like the squat, for example. If we're squatting, now it's both sides, my right and my left side, on the posterior, and the anterior, like my chest muscles, are going to open up and lengthen, right? As opposed to one coming back and one going forward when we throw punches this way, here, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> or when we're um, kicking and all of those other functional movements that we do in real life, when we reach for the door, uh, when we pick something up from the ground, <laughs> This isn't the way we normally try to pick things up from the ground, especially if you're doing it multiple times. This is the most functional way to do it. You split your stance, you put the weight in your heel, you put the weight in the ball of your foot, you reach forward with your right hand, just the same way that when you walk, right? I'm putting, or <laughs> this way here, I'm putting my heel down at the same time I'm putting weight in the ball of my foot and I'm reaching forward. So again, remember, this is shortening, these are contracting. These are, uh, when I'm reaching, it's gonna be the other side that supports. So this is my glute that's contracting, and this is here that's reaching as I come and come back, right? So again, that cross-crawl patterning, very important for um, developing the right muscles, but also developing the ability to contract them in the right patterns. Okay. So let's say you learn to contract your anterior on your right and the anterior on your left side as you contract the posterior on your right lower body and the posterior on your left upper body. Okay. Now you, you learn to practice that. You, you practiced it a lot in your exercises when you trained in the weight room, when you practice your technique in martial arts, when you run around you practice that pattern, right? And so it becomes ing more ingrained into your brain, all right? And so that's important because next time you go to repeat that pattern or when, you're, when life calls upon you to move functionally with rotation, with total body movement, you're gonna be able to do that. You're gonna have the motor patterns to do that more efficiently than somebody that hasn't practiced those same patterns. You're, you're making those patterns more effective and easier to produce and more efficient when you practice them over and over and over again. You learn to contract the muscles in those patterns. You learn to relax the other muscles in those same patterns. So when you take somebody that's been practicing this and then they have to learn a new movement, a new technique, and let's say you take somebody from, um, that's been just a kickboxer their whole life, and then now they go and do grappling. They're gonna they're gonna have practiced a lot of that punching motion and a lot of that kicking motion, which is present in a lot of the jujitsu techniques. Okay, so you're not only training your body and the muscle structures and the ligaments and creating balance within your body, okay, and developing those muscles and those kind of things, but you're also training your mind, and and, and that's another part of the, the training aspect that a lot of times gets overlooked. Like people don't think about what they think about or how their mind works or how their brain is activated or the way that the neural patterning uh, works when they work out, right? And so um, as you are working your, your mind, you wanna get a good mind workout, which means, and a good body workout, which means using your mind and your body the way that you're there designed to be used, right? If you're, you're using your body or your mind in a way that it's not designed to be used, you're eventually gonna get an injury. And that just makes sense, right? If you drive your car in a, in a, in the, in a fashion that it wasn't designed to be driven, then it, your car is gonna break down sooner, okay? So um, again, it's for a healthier mind, a more functional mind, a more functional body, a healthier body, that we practice these movement patterns that we, that, that we have executed over the millennia as primates, as, uh, you know, as we evolved, 
And as we uh, uh, hunted, as we gathered food, as we moved from one place to another, for whatever reason we were moving, we practiced these mo movement patterns and we developed our bodies and mind to be used in that sort of way, right? And um, I think it's important for us to recognize that as we exercise, because if we don't pr promote core rotation and we don't practice these types of movement in our exercise, we become stiff, right? Like again, when I'm in my Superman and I practice this, this pattern, lifting both at the same time and we contract both sides at the same time, then what we're getting there is a, 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 a contraction pattern that prevents rotation, right? If, if I go to rotate and I should go and I should uh, uh, flex my muscles in a certain way, but the way that I have learned to flex my muscles is not rotation based. It's, it's um, either complete back extension or complete black back flexion, okay? Um, th then you're gonna be more stiff when, when life calls on you to rotate. You're not gonna have, for one, those muscles will, will tighten in that same pattern unless you relax them and, and, and intentionally uh, stretch them. Um, and then also you're, you're going to have that stiffness mo motor pattern in your brain. Right, you're gonna have that as your go-to pattern because that's the one that you practice so many times. Okay, so again, we want to practice these patterns for the enhancement of our mobility, so that we can move better, more efficiently, more effectively, without getting injured. But then also, it's because our mind—that's what our mind craves. When we flex and relax certain um, muscles on each side of the body, the hemispheres. Uh, achieve balance, right? When we do this alternated yin-yang with our body and we activate half and then the other half and then we activate it that way, then our, our neural circuits are activated in a way, the way that they're designed to be activated and the, the brain gets more balanced, more efficient, more powerful, more, it works better when you activate the way it's designed to be activated, okay? So, I appreciate you guys listening. I know I explain things over and over again. Uh, I also want to hear what you guys think. I, I, I uh, love people that challenge the way that I think and, or um, prompt me to explain myself in a different way. Right. So if there's something you're not getting or if there's a question or if, you know, let, let me know what you guys think about this type of uh, exercise. Uh, of the bipedal and cross cross crawl motor patterning versus the typical uh, double push like a push up or double pull like a, like a pull up or uh, like a like a deadlift right let me know what you think I know I know there's a lot of people that really uh, love those exercises and there's a lot of good reasons to love those exercises um, if you do you know send me your feedback and let me know why. Um, you know, it might be a great idea to um, incorporate different types of exercises than what I'm than I'm, what I'm talking about. So I would love to have that feedback from you guys. And um, also, if you want to hear more, 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 more Nate Moore, then you want to subscribe to my YouTube, uh, Instagram, and Facebook page. Each one is Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, slash more movement arts, more with two O's. Remember to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, hit that share button, and uh, get the word out if you believe in what I'm talking about. Thank you.